fungi are some of the most widespread and successful group of organisms on the planet. And in this ancient British woodland, there are thousands of them. It's autumn, and autumn's the perfect time of year to find mushrooms, just like this oyster mushroom we have here. Now, mushrooms like this are actually otherwise known as the fruiting bodies of fungi, and for good reason, because this weird floppy looking structure is actually a machine evolved entirely for spreading spores. Essentially, all this does for a fungus is allow it to disperse and reproduce, and you can see exactly what I'm on about. If I take the, uh, the light from my phone and I shine it at just the right angle, you can see billions and billions of spores being released. And because they're so light, they're easily picked up by even the tiniest gust of wind. These microscopic particles are what allow fungi to reproduce. Each one has the capacity to grow into a new fungal organism, and at this time of year, mushrooms are in overdrive. Spore-releasing mushrooms are just the tip of the iceberg. The vast, vast majority of any fungus is this stuff. It's called mycelium, and it's a network of fine hair-like structures that silently and invisibly explore their surroundings. And it's going on absolutely everywhere in this forest. In the logs, in the bark, in the leaf litter, in the soil. Networks from all different species are entwining themselves around the forest. And you could easily confuse them with the roots of a plant, and it's fair to say that structurally or functionally they're quite similar, but fungi are far more closely related to animals like us. One of the major distinctions that makes fungi more similar to us than plants is how they get their energy. Unlike plants that have the ability to make their own energy through photosynthesis by trapping light in their leaves and converting water and carbon dioxide into sugars, Fungi are heterotrophic, meaning that they have to survive by absorbing their energy from other organic matter. This once towering beech tree fell just a few years ago, and you can already see that it's being colonised by fungi. Now this one is called split gill fungus, and it's a type of saprotroph, which means it's a type of fungus that feeds on dead organic matter. And they are particularly special because they can do something that few organisms can. Deep within the dead tissue of this tree, the mycelium of saprotrophic fungi are hard at work. Each of its threads, otherwise known as hyphae, secrete powerful enzymes that are able to break down the complex building blocks of organic tissue. Once broken down into simpler compounds, the hyphae absorbs what it needs, and in doing so, releases nutrients back into the soil. Saprotrophic fungi are the main contributors to the decomposition of organic waste. They are the great recyclers of nature, and if it weren't for them, Dead trees like this would just linger indefinitely, and the forest would become a graveyard of undigested debris. But not all fungi feed on the dead. This mycelium is entangling itself around the roots of a plant. It's absorbing sugars which the plant produced by photosynthesis, but it is by no means harming them. They have, in fact, formed a symbiotic relationship with the plant. The plant is actually feeding it some of its sugars. This infamous fly agaric mushroom is a vivid example of a symbiotic fungus. Its mycelium and the roots of this pine tree are engaged in a mutual 
exchange of nutrients, one that benefits both the fungus and the plant equally. And scientists now believe that over 90% of plants on Earth have a relationship with fungus in this way. Given the sheer number of plant-fungi interactions, it shouldn't come as a surprise then that not all of their relationships are as cordial. This is the fruiting body of a fungus called lion's mane, and it is a parasite. It's inhabiting this oak tree's living tissue and is robbing it of those same sugars, while at the same time offering nothing in return. It's fair to say that fungi are an incredibly adaptable group of organisms and able to exploit all niches in nature, which is why you can find them in some very unlikely places. This seemingly normal looking stone fly is in fact infected with a parasitic fungus. It's a fungus called Entomoptera and it has rendered this fly completely immobile. What the fungus does next is like something out of science fiction. A single stone fly has enough resources in its tissue to sustain the Entomoptera fungus throughout its entire life cycle, from initial infection all the way through to sporulation. Like all organisms, fungi are in a constant struggle to survive, to reproduce and disperse. Each of their mushrooms, as diverse as they are, stands as a testament to their success. Life in this forest owes so much of its diversity and continuity to the inexhaustible efforts of fungi. They are the champions of decay, they're the nurturing companions of plants, but they can also be cruelly self-serving. There's still so much we don't know about them, but one thing's for sure, they're absolutely vital for life as we know it. <laughs>